Well, good day, everybody. We're all back. Today, we got our Evo back. We got some parts, so we're going to be doing some work on it. And what we got today, we got a speedometer cable. We got some brake pads, and some wheel bearings. We're going to do a full oil change on her once again for the season. That should be cool. We're going to check her out, make sure she's all ready to go for the riding season. Having said that, let's get started. Okay, using our three-quarter socket, we're going to start breaking some of these bolts loose on the calipers, on the axle nut, on the other side, just before we lift the thing up in the air. It's just easier now when she's on the ground. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Just break her loose. This is a half inch. Just break them loose. Calibers. Oh. Oh, that one's tight. Give it a smack. There you go. Now we are gonna have to take the disc off the rim in order to do the bearings and the seals, but we're gonna break them loose on the floor. They won't be on the bike. They won't make it rock around on the hoist or anything. Go ahead and jack the bike up. Finish removing the axle nut. Take that all the way off, and we're going to slide the axle that way and remove the front tire. You can remove these caps, but for now, we're just going to slide the axle out. So we just have to loosen them. We don't want half the tire to drop out of there when it's off the ground. Just like that. Remove the calipers. We'll just leave them loose. That one's already done. I'm sure you can come out of there. We'll just leave him hanging for a minute. Bolts out and just put them down on the ground. This is for our axle nut. And there are the brake pads. Take a look in there. Now we're just leaving them on the disc as much as possible so we don't get air in the system. Put him back on there. Try to keep everything together. It just makes it easier when you're putting it all back together. Okay, we're going to go ahead and slide this boot back on the speedometer cable. Speedometer cable, we're going to undo that. But first, we're going to go up top and disconnect it from the back of the speedometer. Gotta love those T handles, they work great. Okay. Remove the speedometer so we can get it the nut at the back there. If you can see that in there, 
That's the guy we want. Remember, those are only finger tight, so you just need your hands to get in there. There's your speedometer cable, and that's where it goes on the speedometer. It's like a square peg. And now, we can undo the speedometer cable, because it's free at the top. We can twist the whole cable right up here we just grab the whole thing like that once we've got it broken loose and just it'll spin because there's nothing stopping it oh get the spacer slippery little suckers we're just gonna hang him here for now yeah, you've got a hole here in the axle. We've got everything disconnected. Uh, take a Robertson screwdriver. Make sure it's Robertson. No, I'm kidding. You can use anything. You put it through the hole here. And this will just help you start to slide the axle out. And there we go. And we'll just catch the rim. And we'll finish pulling the axle out and drop the tire. Slide it up. That's it, pull it right under. Here it comes all the way out. Perfect. Just gonna inspect the axle here and the threads seem good. This is the surface that everything runs on and I, I don't feel any scoring or anything. It's uh, Got some miles on it, but that's perfectly reusable. You put that down, and you want to be careful. There's spacers in here, and they have to go back in the same spot. So you want to put them, just stick them on the axle where they belong as you go, you know, and just stack them all up here. It just makes it easier when you're putting it back together. This is our old speedometer drive, and as you can see, that thing, it's just, it doesn't want to turn at all like this is definitely the problem this thing seized up so that and here's our new one this is our drag specialty and they do look very similar let's hope they are the same they sure look like it let's find out these are pre-packed with grease and sealed so that's a good thing you don't have to do anything but install it and that appears to be the same I'd say those are identical. Let's flip them over. Yeah, that will work nicely on this motorcycle. So thank God for that. Good job, Carl, getting the right parts. Yeah, you see there's a little bit of grease here. We're just going to go ahead and wipe that off right now. And that could be an indication. We do have new seals and new front bearings for it. But there's a lot of grease in these in the hub on the rim anyway. So they tend to do this kind of no matter what but we're gonna put new ones in anyway clean that all off Let's put that guy over okay now one thing you want to check for we just rolled this out from under the bike now that we have the rim off we're cleaning her up there and taking a look at the seals and yeah they could use replacing but you want to check too Let's see if I can find it here. Oh, there she is. Yeah, these tires do have a direction of rotation, and this one was installed properly. I've checked it before, but when you're taking these off, because you can flip them around, they're the same on both sides. You look there. You can get them mixed up. You put it against the wall. You want to check that and make sure the tire is going in the right direction. So that is important. So just you know check your tire it, it's usually written right on there it kind of has to be and just make sure it's going the right way okay just cleaning that up a bit so you see what we're doing we're just going to check these seals and we appear to have the correct one so god willing that'll fit in there before we take it apart Okay, once again, using our high-tech piece of wood and our trusty 18 millimeter, it'll still work, it'll worry. It's not standard, but it'll work. We're just gonna remove that seal just like that. And she comes out of there, just that easy. And there's the old one. And here's our new one. 
It didn't seem to be doing too bad. It's actually not in that bad of shape. The edge is going and a little bit's getting by, but these, eh, they got a lot of grease in there, as you can see. These bearings are actually really good, too. I think they've already been changed. Stick your finger in there, and you can see that's well packed with grease. It's clean, and it wasn't loose in the first place. I don't even know if I'm going to bother changing these i might just tell carl to save his money and, and keep them right in there they're in good shape i think they've been changed before there we go ahead and install our new seal just want to put a little oil on that and we're going to put a little grease on the inside of it as well before we put it in and what you want to do is take a socket the same size as the seal and you just want to drop that in there and give it a gentle tap with a rubber hammer. That's it. Right around the edge. You center it. Put your socket on it. And you want to make sure you're straight up and down. A lot of times, you can push that right in there. And then just, where did I put my hammer? <laughs> Found it. <laughs> just give that a little. And you want her just flushy. And you want it just past flush. You want it just recessed just a little bit, just like that. And that's fine. Okay, and the other side. Oh, there she goes. Ooh, that one jumped. Oh, she made a break for it. She went right on the... Give me the... our new seal. And we're going to put some grease in there, too. Just using my finger this time. And get the grease gun. Oh, that's much easier. Yep, watch out for that. Make sure she is, in fact, square. You want the socket to be just a little bit smaller than the seal or the bearing, whatever you're doing. And that's just about perfect right there. It's just recessed. Make sure she's bottomed right out. And that's why you use a rubber mallet. It just won't harm it. Hit it a lot of times, don't hit it hard once. And that's perfect, just like that. Now we've got to get our axle here and we put a little grease on it and that and there's already lots in there now if you'll look down in the center here there's another spacer it keeps the bearing separated right there and that see that little guy in there and you want to make sure he's in the center and what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the axle up through now and kind of put it all together up to flush here and then put it in the bike as a unit. So we're gonna take these caps the rest of the way off now. This is the time to do it. And this way, if you see, if I stand this up, this guy's gonna kind of fall in the center of the hub and it might be hard lining the axle through it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it vertically like this and then put it in the bike as a unit. It's just easier, it's a trick. It, uh, it might help someone. Okay, we're going to put our new speedometer drive on. And this is the little tab that sheared off of the old one. And that's what happens to them. This is like a safety thing. This will shear off before this will lock your wheel up. So that's why it's there. This is what actually drives the speedometer. See that one turns. This one is broken. So we're just going to... This tab goes in this little slot right here. We're just going to make sure that's cleaned out and that the old tab isn't still in there because sometimes they can be. It appears to be gone and fallen out. You can see it. It's where it pushes on the brake disc there. Leave a little mark. 
but uh, we're going to put the new one on just like that. Make sure that tab goes in that hole, and now we're going to feed our axle through. All right, now you just slide our axle in just like that, and as you can see, that goes in there pretty nicely. And we're out. We just want to go flush to the other side. We'll add the other spacer in that when we lift it up in there and slide it through here. But that will keep everything lined up when we stand the wheel up like that. The spacers won't fall into the center of the hub. Okay, now we gotta save this old boot off the cable because the new one does not come with one. And this looks pretty, it's chrome and everything, but it's drag specialties, it's nice looking stuff. But this boot actually does keep a lot of water from getting in there and just seizing it up and it, it's better if you have it on. So we're gonna steal the old one and we're gonna put it on this cable. Just give that a little shot of oil. And she should just slide right off of there. Like that. And there you go. Now we're gonna put it on that cable. Go ahead and feed that speedometer cable out of there. Fish it out of there. Just like that. We're also going to steal this rubber boot here and this one has to be installed on the new cable first before you put the other end on or they'll be backwards because this won't come off that end it has to go that way okay and we're just going to go ahead and install that Remember to put this one on with the big end facing that way because this is the one for the top. Okay, slide her up just like that. That looks great. This is just a dust cover they keep on there. We're going to put a little oil in there too because it's a brand new cable. I'm sure they greased it, but I've got grease too, so we're going to make sure. First, let's get it in the bike. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove the brake pads. This is the outside pad. You'll notice this little nut on the inside here. And if we take a look here, this is the outside one. And on the back side here, see that little hole? Well, that's what this nut goes into. So that's the inside one. I'm gonna put them right like that. Now okay. I'll remove that loose. Just take that right out of there like that and you can see how worn those are compared to the new ones they've still got some life left in them but it's better to change them the outside one you'll see this little spring retainer clip what you do to get this out of there this just keeps it from rattling when you hit the brakes and that and the other one's bolted in so it won't rattle what you do is just push on the bottom on the outside like that and she should pop right out of there just like that. Install the new one just by doing the reverse of what you did to the old one. Just push it down like that. And just try not to touch the surface, but it's okay if you do a little bit. We got brake clean, we'll hose them off. There's that one. This guy. Just put them up in there. See that? There's your dust cap. It's got slots here, so you can't get it wrong. Now, before we put the brake pads back in, now this is worn a little bit as it time's gone down. We need to compress the caliper. So what I want you to do is take a little piece of foam. You want that on the outside so you don't hurt anything. You don't want to scratch it. And a block of wood, and you want to slide it in there against the caliper. And then just tighten up your C-clamp slowly and you can compress the caliper so it will go back on the brake discs. Okay. Hey, now you can see in there as I turn, you can see the caliper compressing. We're just going to leave her like that for a little bit. Just bottom it right out, it won't hurt nothing. And we'll squeeze that right in there. So we, uh, it's a lot easier to put it back on the desk when we're done, or if at all. We're going to release the caliper now and install the brake pads. Okay. 
just like that. Start with this guy. Okay, the tab goes to the top. There's a little slot in there. You just have to take my word for it. It's there. You'll find it. Okay, and she's sitting in there like that. Dust cover on. And your nut. Don't drive that nut too deep. You don't want to poke the back of the brake pad. You just go till she's tight and give her a little eighth of a turn. Put in your front pad just like that. Okay, and put that on the bike. The bottom one loose for now it's just easier to get it on the wheel itself so we'll just go like that okay on the other side Caliper there. there we go. You see that compressing? Just like that. Or that way, you don't scratch nothing, you don't hurt anything, and it works just fine. Slide the calipers into place there. Mm -hmm. right, we line all of these up. There it goes. The bottom one. check when we tighten up the axle and everything okay we're gonna go ahead and tighten that axle nut up between 45 and 50 foot pounds Rooting our speedometer cable here, like that. 
There we go. I'm going to install the rubber boot off the other cable, just like that. There. Okay, just like that. Wipe off any excess oil you have. Let's install it in there. Okay. Now these do have a little hex end on them, but really you don't have to do that. You can just turn them in by hand. Once it's hooked up at the top, the cable can't back out. I've got it loose at this end. That's why I can spin it. Okay. Slide the boot up. And there we go. Just like new. Wipe it off. And don't forget that little spacer in there. Otherwise, you can. these are brake lines. If you squish them against the neck of the bike, it will cut them off and then you'll have no brakes. The gauge back up. Just finger tight. Okay, and put the gauges back in. Gotta love those T handles. And there we go. Well, all things being equal, that should work. <laughs> we'll test drive it later. Do the final tightening on our calipers. These are 25 to 30 pounds, but just get them like good and tight. Don't overdo it. Just like that and that's fine yes pet the cat gonna let her down off the stand and there she is slide jack out and there you have it folks there's Pretty much the speedometer cable, the drive, the brakes, the seals, and uh, bearings. Eh, we'll get them next time. This don't need it, and I hate to take good parts out for no reason. So I'm not going to charge people for things they don't need. Uh, thank you for watching, everybody, and we'll be right back. Uh, part two, oil change.